Namaste. Welcome to my channel, Cupid Educational Services. In this video, we are going to solve the 54th question from the ISR Aptitude Test 2022. And as you might be knowing, we are solving the physics section from that paper, and this is our ninth question, question 54. The damped harmonic oscillators of damping constants gamma 1 and gamma 2 are oscillating with the same frequency. The displacements of the oscillators at time capital T greater than 0 are equal to x1 at t and x2 at t respectively. Considering the initial displacements to be the same x1 at 0 and x2 at 0 and r to be x1 upon x2 which of the following is correct and we are asked to determine the correct expression for the difference between the uh, damping constants gamma 1 and gamma 2. Okay. Well, on the right side you have uh, the, the time and the natural logarithm of r that is x1 of t and x2 of t is ratio. Now the first thing is you probably uh, know the harmonic oscillator, correct? So harmonic oscillator is our simple spring mass system, correct? So suppose this is our support, this is our spring and then suppose this is our mass. Okay, so this is k spring constant or spring stiffness. Suppose this is mass m. So what is the differential equation now? That is m d two x by d t squared. Okay, plus k x equal to zero. You know that. Correct, and you also know the the natural frequency. Okay, and so on. Root k by m and so on. Okay. Now they are saying the oscillator is damped. Now what does damping mean? Damping means reduction in the amplitude of the oscillator during its uh, oscillation. Okay, And eventually the oscillations will damp. Which means in addition to the spring there also uh, there must be one more thing which we call the damper and this damper basically takes out the energy from the system and dissipates it in the form of heat. So let me show that here. Okay, Suppose this is our damper. It's like a piston okay and uh, it is specified by a damping uh, coefficient I would say which is C and it can be shown that the resistive force okay just like friction it is actually proportional to the velocity of the oscillator at that particular moment okay so it is plus C into dx by dt plus c into dx by dt and this is now our uh, differential equation second order it is homogeneous because right side is zero okay so it's second order differential equation very similar to our rlc series circuit differential equation correct with some changes of course so if you decide to solve this differential equation okay there is something which you call the auxiliary equation which is a quadratic equation we are supposed to solve it and depending on the nature of its roots, whether they are real and equal, real and unequal or complex conjugates, the, the displacement function x of t will be decided. Okay. Now what is what is this damping constant actually? Okay, this damping constant is not c. Okay, c is well let's call it damping coefficient. But this damping constant gamma is actually the ratio of the damping coefficient c and twice the mass of the oscillator okay so this is what they have given us okay so it might be c1 upon m1 for one of the oscillators and for the other oscillator it will be c2 upon twice m2 okay now there are three possibilities of the of the solutions what three possibilities are they i already talked about it then it is decided by the roots of an equation which we call the auxiliary equation and it is specifically this m lambda squared plus c lambda plus k equal to zero okay so basically if it is a first order derivative we replace it by lambda if it is a second order derivative we replace it by lambda squared you will study uh, this in mechanical engineering if you happen to take it after your 12th but anyways okay so uh, this is called as auxiliary equation auxiliary equation okay now the situation is such that 
only if the roots of this auxiliary equation are complex conjugates only then you expect the oscillator to oscillate with some frequency not same with some frequency okay so and, and we call such a system as under damped system okay we call such a system as under damped system now let me let me show you the graphs of under damped critically damped and over damped systems okay yeah so this is the uh, image that i have borrowed from hyperphysics so this is the system which i am talking about okay this is the mass oscillating mass this is the viscous damping so the friction force is there and as you can see here th this force that they have shown linear damping force it is proportional to velocity and that's exactly what we have written here c, c dx by dt okay and of course you know the restoring force that is the spring force that is kx okay now let's look at the second picture here in this the horizontal axis is time and the vertical axis is the ratio of the displacement at time divided by the amplitude so x upon x naught okay or initial displacement you can say now we know that if the system is undamped okay if the system is undamped then it will just be a pure sine curve or a cosine curve okay something like this with no damping at all okay now look at the one so there are actually four graphs here first let me talk about the dashed graph which they are saying over damped okay so in this over damped there is no oscillation the particle or the oscillator will never cross its mean position never okay same thing applies with critical damping the red curve that you see so both for both over damped and critically damped systems you cannot see any oscillations okay the particle fails it to make to the other side of the mean position okay so these are the cases where the roots are real and distinct for over damped and for critically damped the roots are real and uh, equal okay which which part am i am talking about the auxiliary equations roots okay so we can decide the values of mc and k in such a way that we get uh, these two cases but we are not interested in that we are interested in the under damped system okay so in this under damped system it again depends on uh i mean what, what how much damping have you got okay so if it is half of critical damping then that is still uh, a major damping force so you can see the oscillation quickly dying out the third curve that you see here okay and if we reduce it to one tenth of the critical damping for the chosen uh, set of parameters mass c and spring constant then you can say that the oscillations are there but nonetheless they are damped and by that i mean you look, if you look at take a look at this ratio this is somewhere uh, around 0.7 and this is 1 so from 1 we go, we went to 0.7 and then if you go to this then we are at uh, we are somewhere in between 0.4 and 0.6 slightly above 0.5 so from 1 we went to 0.7 and now we have gone to 5 and again if you go to this it's less than 4 or near to 0.4 okay so this is known as under damped oscillation okay and that that is the case because in the problem they have said that it is uh, the frequency is there okay now let us come to the solution of this okay let us come to the solution of this if you solve the second order differential equation then you'll get a solution which will be product of two functions the negative exponential function and some trigonometric function sin or cos and the reason is obvious this graph here this graph is just of the cosine function okay and well can decide the phase later okay or the epoch the initial displacement and so on. but the point is this is undamped but our system is underdamped okay now you you might get you might have got a hint or, uh, about the function which which we should multiply this by okay by looking at the overdamped and critically damped systems and that is a negative exponential function okay so we are going to start the solution by picking up this ready made solution we are not going to solve the differential equation but if you do it okay you will need the roots of this and then you will get something like this okay e to the power negative gamma t a cos omega t minus alpha so we are going to start our solution by looking at uh, by, by writing down this solution okay 
fine so let us start with x1 x1 of t will be equal to negative e to the power negative gamma 1 t a cos omega t minus alpha and x2 of t will be e to the power negative gamma 2t uh, a cos omega t minus alpha now you might ask why are we taking a and alpha to be the same okay agreed that frequencies are same so omega omega is same but why are a and alpha same because see they are saying x1 at 0 and x2 at 0 are same x1 at 0 and x2 at 0 are also same that's the reason why we are taking the values of a and alpha to be the same in both the cases okay now let's take the ratio x1 of t upon x2 of t that's what we want so now a and cos of omega t minus alpha they will get cancelled and what you will uh, what you will be left with is e to the power negative t gamma 1 minus gamma 2 okay but what is x1 upon x2 that is r x1 upon x2 is r therefore r is equal to e to the power negative t gamma 1 minus gamma 2 take log ln r is equal to negative t gamma 1 minus gamma 2 or okay now we need to pick the right option now we have to find gamma 1 minus gamma 2 okay so gamma 1 minus gamma 2 has to be negative 1 upon t ln r negative 1 upon t ln r gamma 1 minus gamma 2 is negative 1 upon t ln r yes that is option c okay now i didn't know how much background you had for this problem so i went uh, 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 a bit deeper and also told you about what we call as auxiliary equation and how its roots the nature of its roots the quadratic equations roots decide the system that we are going to get or the behavior of the system that we are going to see okay one last thing before we conclude you, you must have seen these doors okay which have a device attached at the top of uh, them okay so if we open it and the, the, the door gets closed automatically but it doesn't bang on the uh, on the on the cage or on the, on the frame so those doors okay the dampers there are picked in such a way that we have critical damping there okay we have uh, critical damping in those doors okay because you see the in the critical damping it is neither over damped nor under damped in the critical damping the oscillations die out quickly look at the time okay so the time that the red graph takes to reach the horizontal axis or to basically uh, make the system or make the mass reach its mean position is the least for critical damping and that's our objective the door should get closed in the minimum amount of time okay so that was the problem if you knew the solution of the under damped system okay it was just a three or four steps answer okay but you had to know a lot of theory for that so that is our 54th 